Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mount and Blade Bannerlord and we're doing another Strengths and Weaknesses video. Today we're going to focus on the Azurai, so the Southern Desert Dwellers. And we're going to be focusing, like I said, on Strengths and Weaknesses, so the differences in this faction to the others. And uh, it'll kind of show you, depending on what playstyle you want to do, what faction you should choose. So I've done a whole series of these. This is the final one in the series. I've covered every other faction already. Uh, so if you were trying to decide which one for your next playthrough, or possibly which one for your first playthrough, hopefully this series uh, gives you a good idea of that. Or if you're already playing the game, it'll just help you dial in on specific strengths and weaknesses of each faction. Uh, and with all that in mind, if you're one of those people saying, ah, it doesn't make a difference, you can use whatever troops and armor you want, don't. Don't do that. That's my recommendation. Uh, play the game from a roleplay perspective where you limit yourself. It makes the each playthrough a lot more interesting and diverse and makes it worth playing more than once. Because if you just go over and recruit whatever troops you want, wear whatever armor you want, uh, it all kind of turns into the same playthrough over time. So it's a lot more fun to actually specialize each play playthrough. And also, if you're saying that you never notice difficulty uh, change from playing uh, for different factions, I recommend turning the difficulty up, because it's clearly not hard enough at that level. But with all that in mind, let's just dive on in, and uh, I'll tell you what the Azurai are all about. So for starters, it says the Azurai. The Empire always preferred not to send and its legions into the army devouring wastes of the Nahasa. Instead, it projected its power into this borderland by cultivating client rulers among the clans, who competed in an endless dance of power. Those clans that could secure a hold on the oasis won an imperial subsidiary to protect passing caravans and grow rich. Those who could not were pushed into the desert, left to raise goats and raid caravans until they could plot a comeback. Today, with the waning of the empire, the Azurai have agreed to form a confederacy under a sultan chosen from the richest of the clans, the Banu Huyan. But everyone knows that the dance has only temporarily been stopped, and at the right moment it will begin again. So these are a fun desert-dwelling nomadic peoples, and I quite like playing as the Azurai. I think a lot of people don't, just because... I mean, there's lots of cool things about the other factions, but the Azurai definitely have a really fun and unique playstyle that I, I recommend everyone try at least once. So let's just start it off with some strengths for the Azurai, and we'll start with troop strengths. So starting off for troops, we have the Azurai Vanguard Ferris, uh, which is a great strength. They are the third best heavy lancer uh, cavalry overall in the entire game. For stats on these bad boys, we have riding of 170, polearm of 200, one-handed uh, one of 170, and throwing of 140, which which these guys all do because they're equipped with a saber, a long lance, some throwing javelins, and a, and a shield, as well as nice heavy armor and a really good desert horse, some of the fastest and nimblest war horses in the game, which also have really good armor. So the Azurai Vanguard Ferris are a really good heavy cavalry troop, and they are definitely a strength that the Azurai have. Another strength of the Azurai army is their master archers. Uh, these ones are the second best archers in the game overall, third best if you count the potential. Batanian Fians and Batanian Fian Champions as different troops. But basically, the only archers, at least on foot, that are better in the game than the Azurai Master Archers are the Batanian Archers. And it's much easier to get giant armies of Azurai Master Archers because they come from the basic recruit troop, tra troop tree instead of the noble troop tree like the Fians do for the Batanian. As far as stats on the Master Archers go, we've got Bow of 160, One-Handed of 130, and Athletics of 130. Uh, they come with the Desert War Bow, which is really powerful, and two full quivers of arrows so lots of arrows with these guys uh, their armor is not as heavy as some other factions but it is it does offer pretty good protection for them so a very solid archer troop that is better than most of the archers in the game so definitely a strength then of course for uh the next strength we've got one of my favorite units in the game the azurai mamluk palace guard these are the third best overall two-handed infantry units in the game uh they are a branch of the Az azurai mamluk soldier tree which which is the uh, which is another special troop tree that the Azurai have, and if you follow the right path down to the Mamluk Palace Guard, you get these troops, and they're really good. So if you look at the picture there, obviously it kind of paints a picture there. We have a great big two-handed axe, which is really effective against enemy infantry, as well as some in enemy cavalry and especially enemy shield walls and stuff like that. Uh, they're also very heavily armored and come with throwing axes. So for stats on these ones, we have two-handed of 130, athletics of 140, and throwing of 130. So just a really really good troop super effective uh for defending castles assaulting castles and in the open field excellent unit definitely a strength then as our last troop strength that we'll be talking about we have the azurai mamluk heavy cavalry which are the 
third best mounted archers overall in the game. They're really good. Uh, so they have a riding skill of 130, bow of 130, one handed of 130. Uh, they have a really good Desert War Horse, which is very fast, uh, and it's also well armored, so it's pretty hard to take down. And the troop themselves is also pretty well armored and comes with the Desert War Bow and plenty of arrows. So a really good mounted archer. Uh, it outclasses the Imperial mounted archer and uh, is only outclassed by the two best mounted archers in the game, which both belong to the Kuzates. Uh, other than that, these are these mounted archers really really help to make the Azerai army extremely effective against the Vlandians and the Sturgians and the Batanians if you can get them into an open field and you're not trying to fight them in the forest. So excellent mounted archer, one of the best troops in the game, and that is all of the areas that I want to focus on for strengths in the Azerai army. So they have a solid two-handed infantry, uh, footman archer, heavy cavalry, and mounted archer. So they don't have any areas where they're missing one. Like they don't have like the Sturgeons don't have a good uh, footman archer and the uh, Vlandians don't have a a mounted archer and things like that. There are certain weaknesses that a lot of your uh, factions have. The Azerai don't have any major weaknesses like that. But one of their weaknesses is that none of their troops are, again, the best. It's similar to the Empire in that way. So for their heavy cavalry, they're the third best overall. Their master archer is the second best overall. Their veteran infantry is the fourth best overall. And their palace guards and heavy cavalry, their two-handed infantry and their mounted archers are both the third best overall. So they rank very high in the troop tree, and so they're going to have advantages against certain factions, but they are they don't have any of their troops that are the number one best. So there's never a spot where you can super depend on being massively outnumbered and winning, even though you have, you know, just because you've got these real high-level troops, because they are outclassed by individually specialized troops for every other faction. The other problem is shields. So the Azerai just as a rule don't have very good shields so even the larger shields that you'll see like on the mamluks and then the you know the regulars cavalry they're decent sized but they're pretty low quality so they can break and fall out of their hands pretty quick and then when you get to a troop like the heavy cavalry which does have come with a shield it's a teeny tiny little shield and that's exemplified as well in their infantry troops so not very high quality shields and even when they are slightly higher quality they're very small and they don't provide a lot of protection so i consider it a shield and makes them particularly uh, good targets for enemy archers. And the other disadvantage is that even though the Azerai veteran infantry are a pretty solid troop, they're pretty well outclassed by like a lot of your other heavy infantry. And so as a frontline unit, because they usually utilize their spear, they're not as reliable as like the even the Vlandian sergeants, the Imperial legionaries, the Kuzate Darkons, the Sturgeon heavy axemen and spearmen, and even the Batanian uh, wildlings and folksmen are all more reliable frontline infantry units. So if I had to say one weakness for the Azerai, it would be infantry, even though the Mamluk Palace Guard are really good and the Azerai veteran infantry have a lot of strengths, they can be pretty well outclassed by a strong infantry force from any other faction. Uh, but those are all of the troop weaknesses that I really uh, noted. Oh, other than that, also not great helmets. So the veteran infantry have a decent helmet, but if you look at like the master armor, uh, the master archer, they have a big open face helmet. Mamluk cavalry is the same. The Mamluk palace guard also has decent defense, but you know, just on the whole, not great helmets. Oftentimes you'll see them taking arrows to the face and going down immediately. Uh, that's it for troop strengths and weaknesses. Definitely one where it's uh, my favorite way to go, especially mid to late game in here, is for my offensive army, just all cavalry. So so when you do that, you've got an extremely fast force that it's close. Some people will say the Kuzate cavalry, full cavalry armies are better. Some people will say the uh, Azerai, they come close for me. They're definitely competitors. Uh, and whereas the Vlandians and the Empire have the, you know, number one and two best heavy uh, Lancer cavalry, they don't have very good, well, the Vlandians don't have any mounted archers and the ones for the Empire are mediocre. So I find that for full cavalry armies, so highly mobile, very fast striking forces, the Azerai are definitely up there for it. So that's a general strength. Another one is that the economy of the Azerai is very rich in uh, luxury resources. So if you want to be a trader and make your main source of money from trading in this game, which is something that I really enjoy doing, uh, 
it's very easy to make a profit selling your luxury resources to anywhere else. So you're going to have a good supply of things like silk, stuff like that. But the uh, biggest luxury resource that I like to trade from here is actually dates because it's a type of food. But uh, the Azurai are the only people with dates. So you can make a, a super good profit. The far general, as a general rule, it's not always true. But as a general rule, the farther away from the Azurai territory you get, the more money you can sell the dates for so selling them up in the sturgeon territory for example can get you a lot of money so that's just something i quite enjoy about them as a strength uh they have a really good economy another one is they're a pretty secluded kingdom so even though they're a very large and stretched out kingdom kind of like the Stur uh, sturgeons to the north they have two really small borders so the border over here is this tiny little section that they border with the uh well, the Vlandians are over here, but sometimes they get to over here, and then the Southern Empire. So a really small border right there, and then a small border over here between the uh, the Empire and the Kuzates. So you don't have to worry about the troops until you, if you're losing real bad, then you'll have them in your core. But most of the fighting for the Azerai takes place on the on the far flanks. So they've got a really easily defendable border because most of it is this inland sea here. Another general strength is that all of the noble troop tree possesses horses, which makes them uh, much cheaper and easier to upgrade. And so when you're doing the heavy lancer cavalry for the Azerai, that's your noble troop tree. Every, they, the Azerai youth start with a horse. So you don't don't actually need war horses to upgrade the uh, Azerai noble tree all the way to the Vanguard Ferris, which is an advantage because most of your other nations, their noble troop tree, uh, well, the cavalry based ones, they don't start with a horse, so you need war horses to upgrade them just to tier two. Whereas the Azerai youth start off with the desert war horse right away. So that is a general strength that I think a lot of people overlook. It's why whenever I play as the Azerai, I have a full cavalry army much quicker than any other nation in the game. Uh, as far as general weaknesses for the Azerai as a people go, uh, your mounted units require war horses to upgrade, which are expensive in the Azerai territory. So that's for the Mamluk ones. So not your main troop tree, your your Mamluk troop tree, because you, you get to the Azerai Mamluk soldier, and to get to either the... and to take her down the Mamluk troop tree, you need war horses. And the problem is the Azerai, they have really good horses, uh, especially the desert war horse, but they don't have a lot of horses. And uh, so if you're focusing, like if you're mostly in this area, you're going to either have to pay a lot for the horses that you can buy here or just have way less horses. So basically the way around that is to do trading missions where you either go up to Sturgia to sell your dates and other luxury resources for the most money possible. And then you head into the Empire or the Kuzate territory and buy a bunch of war horses there where they're a lot cheaper. But uh, getting war horses in the Azerai territory is definitely expensive and only in small amounts. So that's a weakness. Uh, another weakness for them as a territory is an army-based one, and it's all of your low-level troops are the most fragile in the game. They've got the worst armor, and just they just die the easiest. So you have a really high attrition. Your Azerai recruits, tribesmen, and your basic Mamluk soldiers, as well as your light archers and footmen, are all just really, really susceptible to damage. I would even say your tier 4 Azerai archers and infantry are not as well armored as other tier 4 troops in any other faction. So they're lightly armored and it makes them super fragile. So your attrition rates early game before you get your army up to a point where it's got a lot of really strong troops is really high. It's hard to maintain these guys because they just die too easily. So that's a weakness for the Azerai. You got to get past the point where you're reliant on all of your first three tiers of troops because they just die way too easily. They're too fragile. So finally, talking combat strategy. The Azerai, they're the best strategy that I've ever found is an aggressive offensive strategy. They're a pretty weak uh, on the defense side, uh, and part of that comes from the types of troops you have, and another part of that comes with the equipment. You don't have the best shields in the game, and the helmets are generally not that great either, so you got too many weak points and you lose a lot of troops on defense. Uh, but if you're aggressive, especially Especially with a heavy cavalry focus, the Azerai are really, really good. The best combat strategy for your army build here, so I have two different ones. Late game, it's all cavalry. It's like 60% mounted archers, 40% heavy cavalry, or 50-50. That's late game. Once you get to that point, that's the way that I run my army as an Azerai. Uh, early game, when you've got more of a mix and less cavalry, I like to do 10% infantry, 10% archers, 40% heavy cavalry, and 40% mounted archers. So it's, I still like to focus mostly on cavalry, 
but I will utilize uh, infantry and archers in the field early game with the Azurai. And when I'm doing that, I'll make small defensive infantry blocks and I'll put my archers behind them, which is a, a real basic strategy. And then I will aggressively charge with my cavalry and I'll skirmish with the horse archers. So on, on in that strategy, I will just, the first thing I'll do is set my infantry block and set my archers because, you know, you can do it before your enemy is anywhere near you. Then I'll form up my cavalry and I'll set them to charge. And then I'll set my skirmishers, my mounted archers to skirmish, and I'll focus on it. If I notice my cavalry slowing down, I'll reset and then recharge. You know, I'll take my, I'll tell my cavalry to retreat, form back up and then recharge. Otherwise, I'll just leave them on the aggressive charge the entire time. And they will pursue the enemy and make sure that they you know, annihilate basically the whole enemy army. But if you do that, you then just keep advancing your small infantry and archer block, which will keep drawing the enemy infantry and archers towards you because they won't they won't focus on your cavalry that way, which it's a good way to keep your enemy guessing. Late game, where I've got the all cavalry army, I will do a similar thing, but I like to split my forces if I can. So I'll set separate commanders with uh, like half of the heavy cavalry each and half of the skirmishers each. And then I'll have the skirmishing ones skirmish and control them if I need to, but I'll keep at least one of the heavy cavalry ones in reserve and wait until the enemy infantry forms up and then send them into charge. But uh, yeah, that's in in a nutshell, the two different strategies I use with the Azurai are, are the late game and the early game ones. Late game, it's all cavalry. Early game, I utilize what I have. Uh, but those are the percentages I do. And that's it for Azurai. So that is all of the strengths and weaknesses and what I find to be the best combat strategy for the Azurai as a hole in this game hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it useful but that's all for today we'll see you next time thanks for watching another dare to game video if you like this video please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month it makes a huge difference but in any case thanks for watching and have a nice day i'll see you next time